Hello and welcome back. And today we want to talk about how to synchronize your Synology NAS with a third party cloud platform. The ones we're gonna look at today are Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive from Microsoft. Now, a lot of you might be thinking that the idea of using a third party cloud and a NAS together is absolutely horrendous, and it's not. I can see why you might think that, and with someone like myself totally championing, championing NAS on a regular basis, you might wonder why I would volunteer that having a NAS and a third party cloud platform from those providers is a good thing, and that's largely to do with off-site backups. Now, most people use NASes in the wrong way. A lot of people use a network attached storage device and think it is a backup. And in the case of a Synology, maybe they've got some iPhones, some Android phones, some PCs, some Macs, uh, some iPads, all that kind of equipment, and all of them are synchronized and backing up to the NAS device, which is great. But the minute they need space on their phones, laptop, tablets, etc., they start deleting things because in their head they go, it's okay, those files are on the NAS, which is true. However, now those files are not a backup. They are the only copy of those files in existence. And all too often I've had to explain to people that have lost a decade of data that this was the reason why. Consequently, the idea of having a two-stage backup minimum should be encouraged to anyone who takes their data seriously. And if you've gone out to buy a NAS, congratulations, you take your data seriously. So with that in mind, you need to have somewhere as a second tier of storage for your NAS. The amount of data on these devices can sometimes you know, be quite huge. So the idea of buying another NAS can be quite daunting. However, let's say of all the data on your NAS, there may be a percentage that is genuinely irreplaceable. And if you're a home user, this can be photos of your family, your wedding day, your children being born, uh, family members that are no longer with us, basically photos that are completely irreplaceable. Consequently, these items may not be enormous, but they are enormous in personal value. Consequently, the idea of backing them up to a third party cloud makes a lot of sense. First and foremost, the NAS can encrypt all that data before it sends it to the cloud. Two, that because these file sizes are quite small, you can get hold of loads and loads of free online storage at quite small sizes, but still good enough for the job. With Google Drive offering everything from five to 50 gigabytes of free space, Dropbox giving you between two and five gig, and up to 25 gig straight off the bat from OneDrive, that's still quite a lot of data, the uh, capacity of online data storage that's utterly for free. And consequently, you can then back up your files from the important files from your NAS to a synchronized cloud space. And as long as they're encrypted, if someone ever did hack that account, the data is useless. And you've still got it on the NAS as well. So let's talk about how to synchronize the data on our NAS with the cloud. The first tool we want to utilize is called Hyper Backup. And Hyper Backup is a one portal synchronization and backup tool. It lets you utilize any of the main methods of backup between the Synology NAS and other platforms. We have used it already for USB backups and R-Sync to back up to another NAS. And today we want to back up to the cloud. Let's start with Dropbox. Now, first you need to select the cloud provider you wish to use, in this case, Dropbox. When you click next, an API banner will pop up asking you to authenticate the connectivity with Dropbox and Synology Hyper Backup. Always check there's a padlock and that you're on that domain. Click allow, and then from this point, it will start the synchronization of the Synology NAS, because this is the Synology side, and that third-party cloud platform. Next, we have to select the folder we want to use. In this case, I'm gonna go for Plex Media Server. Now, this is the destination of the data. In this case, this is the data being sent from the NAS to the online storage platform. On the alternative, you can swap it and go the other way around as well. So you can now select somewhere on the NAS and back it up to the cloud. The options are open to you. Now, if you're someone that uses, for example, a Google Pixel phone, where it backs up all of your photos and videos regularly to a Google Drive account, and if you have got a Google phone, they give you virtually unlimited space, you can then synchronize that folder with your NAS, and that would synchronize all of those photos and send them regularly to the NAS. But for now, let's back up a folder. Let's go with music and back that up to our cloud platform. And it will create a folder on the cloud 
called SIM test one in my case. Click next, and this will talk about where you want the data to go from. So again, we'll go with photo. It then asks if we want to synchronize application data because some of these are a higher priority. And these are applications such as surveillance station where the data has to be presented in a certain way and uploading it to a random platform out of context and out of folder context can be very damaging. Next, we can talk about how we want the data to be backed up and do we want to utilize encryption as mentioned earlier to make sure that if the cloud platform was hacked, will you be fine? I'm gonna click yes, and then you can add your encryption password here. So I'm just gonna put the word password because I am super imaginative. We click apply, and then it's letting you know that if the encryption key is lost, your data will never be restored. It utilizes AES encryption at 256 bit, which is military grade. So your data is as safe as it can be as long as you remember that encryption password. And there you have it. We're now creating the link to our cloud platform for synchronization of our data and with the password downloaded to my local machine. It will then ask if we'd like to do an export now, to which I'll say no. And there we go, it's ready to export. And we can have that on a schedule, or we can do a one-off, depending on how we want to do it. And we can have it having as regular as clockwork, and it really is up to us how we want to do it. Now, what's particularly interesting, particularly if you're the sort of person that has multiple cloud accounts, is you don't have to have just one. Alongside our Dropbox account, we can now create a Google Drive cloud backup and once again the api pop-up appears to get our permission we check the padlock we check the domain and we continue we then get permission from the in this case google drive side of things to let us do the synchronization and then the synology nas will want us to agree that we're okay sending files in that direction too again we can access the folders on our cloud drive of which there's more on this one such as 4k samples and with this one that's the directory it's going to be going to. And this time, we're going to be synchronizing from the cloud to the NAS. Now we describe where we want the files to go to. So let's send those files to the media folder on that NAS. And again, we can choose whether these are to do with an app. We click next, and now we can create that schedule of backup and more. And again, encryption can be enabled all the way through. Once again, we can create a backup rotation. And what this means is when you back up time and time again, when time get, when space becomes limited, you can then decide how many versions of that data you wish to keep. If you only want to keep one, it will constantly overwrite that version. Otherwise, it will sequentially write over the data in whatever number you put. So if we put 10 here, after we've had 10 backups, the 11th backup will overwrite the first and so on and so forth. Carrying on, the backup wizard is almost complete and now we are applying our Google Drive backup and it really is that straightforward. And with so much online cloud space and the options of encryption built into this tool of hyper backup, there really is no excuse not to have this, third, this second line of backup or even second, third, fourth or fifth with so many cloud platforms supported. For those that are interested in backing up their entire NAS, I would recommend Backblaze at this time because Backblaze allows you to do an entire system upload backup. You can't interact with it, but it has a monthly fee, but is probably one of the best and most well-known third-party cloud platforms for backing up your entire NAS array. There you go, it's done. We're not gonna back it up yet, but now we've got our two tasks and we can add as many as we want. We could go ahead and add an LUN or a LUN target that lets us target a uh, network drive or an intelligent network drive that's actually internet based and there are so many more options for backing up our data to the cloud from the nas or vice versa but i'm going to wrap things up here my next video is going to be about usb backups and i hope you guys check that out but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this let's initiate that backup now initiate the other backup too why not and then we'll see this happening in the background. But if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for the next video. Cheerio.